Hello again, uh, let's do another tutorial. Uh, this one is more specialized and more in-depth uh, about asteroid photometry. We saw in the previous video how to blink images and quickly find what objects are moving in our images. With this one, we'll actually do measurement. So if you image an asteroid uh, field uh, over a period of time and then you want to measure that asteroid to get a light curve from it um, this is a tool for it so let's go to analysis photometry batch photometry or control j so you can either measure a fixed object like an exoplanet transit or you can measure an asteroid so let's discuss the parameters this is the radius of the photometry calculation for six pixels, uh, inner 10 pixels, and outer sky is 15 pixels. We want to find five reference stars in the image. They are stable, and Prism can find that for you automatically. Saturation level of 65, 535 uh, per 16-bit CCD. Uh, for this one, uh, an 8-inch, uh, I believe, Newtonian was used uh, in conjunction with an Attic 314L. And this was done in 2016. So let's go find a reference image. So let's go here, here, and let's go to... These are all CPA files, which is um, Prism's proprietary compressed file, which is a quarter the size of a fit. This is especially handy for really big images. So let's pick number one. Uh, the images are already uh, registered, which is yes. If you pre-process in PRISM to do data reduction, like to remove bias, dark, and flat um, signal from your um, light images, they're, they're going to be registered. Use 3D gauss fitting instead of uh, integrating circle photometry, I'm sure we can remove it to see what happens. Maximum search distance of 10 pixels. And you have to provide it with the actual asteroid name. Uh, and this one is called Preston. That's in the image that we want to measure. Uh, let's go choose the rest of the images. Let's do a control A for all of them, or you can press on the first one, go all the way down. We have a total of 131 images. Press Shift and click to select all of them. Press Open. Plate solving. Now uh, we're using the UC UCAC4. Prism comes with the GSC ACT built in. So that's included with the download and the install. But I have UCAC4 here as, as well as USNO available on my website at Hyperion dash astronomy.com and head over to the download section if you don't have them these are very big they're about five to six gigabytes each so it'll take a while to to download um, the angle doesn't really matter it's gonna get figured out and the polynomial degree is two press ok and press ok and press start now prism is gonna go load all the frames And then it's going to start the calculations. Now it is extracting the stars from the images to do comparison. All right, here's the calculation window that that displays the result of the um, photometry 
of this asteroid. So the yellow is the common area to all these images. The green squares are the identified stars. The red targets or these circles are the reference stars we asked it uh, to find, which is um, or five of them right here. So if we press on any of these stars, just left click, uh, you'll find the actual measurement of its magnitude, which as you, as you can see, it's pretty, pretty stable. And if you pick any other one, again, these are the actual, the magnitude change, pretty stable. Let's go check another one. Same thing, magnitude 13. Press another one. Same thing. Yeah, same thing. So if you decide that you don't like one of these stars, you can right click on it. And you can use it as the sole reference, or you can de delete it as a reference, or you can get information about it. Let's press this. This opens a new window that will give you information about the star. Uh, you can choose uh, any of these two. You can choose the CDS information or the Simbad information. Let's try CDS and let's try this star and do information about it. Here it is. All the information you need about these stars since they uh, uh, the uh, astrometry and photometry has has been done so prism can identify these objects very easily let's make this window a little bit bigger and this is our asteroid it has been found um, it actually displays the tra trajectory and the uh, inner and outer photometry um, area calculation of the asteroid which is where these lines are uh, these like for example if we take if we take this star you will see that the transit of the asteroid has actually affected its magnitude which is which is normal it went up by an, uh, an order of one magnitude uh, if we find typically if you find any more stars where they have close proximity to other stars and use them as reference the same will happen if we left click on our asteroid you will see it's varying magnitude this is normal for a a non-spherical object to have different brightness as it spins um, almost like say like a, a, a peanut for example uh, as it spins the light will vary and this is over six hours of time there's a lot you can do with uh, with this window uh, you can adjust your histogram to make it easier to see you can save it as JPEG as well uh, whatever you want and you can press the RMS button and this will give you uh, a representation of all the stars if you to see where the outliers are this is RMS and this is the magnitude so if you press this one for example you'll see that it's this star right here And let's try another one. This says this star over here, but this uh, could be polluted because it's it's being cut off by the um, the common area. Let's try something else. This one. This one is also polluted by the actual st the other star that's next to it. Uh, this one again, same one. This one varies quite a bit. 
there is also a good chance of finding a variable star in here um, using this this actual function. Um, when you're done with this, uh, you can. By the way, you can use this for an exoplanet or an asteroid, like we discussed earlier. Uh, you can also save this as a text anywhere you wish and you can save the actual function itself in a dot fot p h o t and let's let's try it let's try it preston we'll save it on the desktop i hope this video helped you understand how to do asteroid photometry and possibly exoplanet transit photometry in prism this is a very very powerful function that will aid in um, doing analysis like light curves of, of asteroids now this can be applied in any asteroid that is cataloged it also helps you to identify any uh, variable objects like variable stars in the image as well uh, pretty straightforward pretty easy and above all um, it has a really good graphical interface so the data is represented in a, in a graphical way for advanced astronomer this is a no big deal but um, for uh, beginners in the amateur community, this is a huge tool to help them understand how uh, these things work and give them really good tools that are very, very powerful and easy to use at the same time. I really hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did, and hopefully uh, this will be uh, your beginning in, in photometry, especially asteroid photometry. I uh, hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you on the next one.